It's like a treasure, having a treasure each day. I wish I listened and followed God earlier. Maybe I would have spared with what I've experienced. Hi everyone, what's up? My name is Kay Ramos and welcome to my channel where I share tips to help you gain clarity and purpose as you get closer to Jesus. So today I am starting something new here in my channel. Actually, as much as possible, I don't want to share personal things here, but after lots of prayers, I realized that I want God to use me in any way He wants, and that includes sharing my experiences, lessons, and mistakes I've had for His glory. So I will call this episode, Getting Real with K. So today will be the first entry for that. I'm actually so excited and nervous at the same time because I am sharing my vulnerable bra self. So on my previous video, I shared with you some journaling prompts inspired by the Bible related to calling. So today I would like to share with you some personal experiences regarding my calling and maybe you could relate somehow. Uh, the Bible readings that I shared from my previous video are actually really meaningful to me because they helped me understand what God called me to do. So they sort of acted like eye-opener to me. Whew. I actually first heard and felt God's calling in my life way back in 2016, but I chose to ignore it. Back then, I was mostly home, and that was also the time when I started studying the Bible and really enjoyed reading and learning. So along the process, I just felt a conviction to share what I'm learning, and I felt really enthusiastic about it, so I started my own blog. I think I only um, wrote three blog posts related to my Christian faith and the Bible then. I got so scared because I felt truly unworthy to share it. Questions like, who am I? I didn't go to seminary school. What if I share the wrong stuff unintentionally? It was also the first time that I learned that you can make money from blogging. And so I enrolled in a course and that's when I totally pivoted and abandoned what God called me to do. So I started writing on Medium and I realized that most of the articles that do well there are articles related to self-improvement, productivity. So now, instead of me talking about my faith, I talk about self-help things, personal productivity, and other more. So I became a top writer in, on several categories there. So instead of me reading the Bible now, I now read self-help books so that I can write more articles. Instead of me writing for something that I truly believe in, I started chasing the traffic and giving in to what the audience really wants to hear or to read. So it went on for about a year until I reached a point where I hated writing. I felt like I lost myself because now I write just to please people. Sometimes I don't really believe on the things I read and write. So I intentionally hid who I am, especially my Christian faith, because I don't want people to say something negative about it since it's so important to me. It's part of me. And at the same time, my faith is so important to me that I felt guilty of not sharing more about Jesus. Like I could always hear that voice, that this is what you should do. I came to a point where I felt so lost and the more self-help books I read, the emptier I become. And I felt like a dry well because I used to love writing and now I hated the thought of writing. I don't even wanna write. I don't even wanna look at my journals. I decided to just quit the entire thing and I felt defeated because imagine I have invested all this time and effort for nothing. And so I felt really depressed and that's when I went back to reading my Bible. So I started reading it again, enjoying it, and I realized the difference of the wisdom you get from the Bible as opposed to the humanistic views. So I could still hear the calling or like the voice that maybe you should share, go back to what God called you to do. But instead, I decided to move to a different endeavor and that is the e-commerce business. So I tried doing Amazon in the later part of 2017. And this 2020, I am actually projecting my biggest year because I have more products and more connections with wholesale vendors. And so I prepared. I prepared for 20, 
2020, I prepared for my inventory because I want to go back to teaching this March 2020. So I really, really, really prepared for this year. But when you are selling on the third party platform like Amazon, worries about getting suspended is always there. So if you don't follow their rules or you have like many negative claims or feedbacks, they can shut down your account. And I'm happy so far my account is healthy and I have zero claims. But one day, I woke up on March 13 with the dreaded email that they suspended my account. Uh, of course, I felt gutted when I read that because I know I did not violate any rules. So they said they suspended it because someone tried to use the credit card associated with my account. And that is great, which is good for my protection, right? So they asked me for verification details, submit information to make sure that it's really me. So I went, uh, I complied, submitted the things that they need. We went back and forth for several months, but they just kept giving the same response template. And every night I would cry to the Lord about it until there's a revelation that I just have to let go. So after months of fighting, I decided I have to let go because it's taking a lot of toll on my mental health and my mental energy. So on July 22nd, I received an email that they disposed my inventory, even though I already requested that they send it back to me. And I was so furious and upset about what they did because I requested for them to return those things. But instead, they disposed them without my my consent so all night long i was crying to the lord about it because how can you fight a giant corporation and then during my daily quiet time the next day july 23rd i received this message from the lord remember that i am doing a one-year bible reading plan so basically i am following a plan right now and what is in the plan that's what i'm reading one of the bible ver uh, the bible verse that really like stood out to me that time is this Isaiah 43 verses 18 to 19 forget the former things do not dwell on the past see I am doing a new thing now it springs up do you not perceive it I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland when I read that I felt so relieved it's like God is reassuring something to me like he is saying I am not blind like I could see all these things going on in your life and then the next day during my daily quiet time there's another message Isaiah 47 verses 3 to 4 your nakedness will be exposed and your shame uncovered I will take vengeance I will spare no one our Redeemer the Lord Almighty is his name is the Holy One of Israel so I've been crying to the Lord about Amazon for like several months. And this verse is just reassuring. Like, you know what, Casey? You, Casey, you don't really have to do anything. Just leave it to me. I will take vengeance. <laughs> I know it's not good to think about vengeance, but that's it. That's a sign that I just have to let go and let God take over. And remember that I want to go back to teaching this March 2020. But then my plans of going back to teaching disappeared because schools were shut down due to COVID-19. Like who could ever prepare for that? It never crossed my mind that it will happen. So you see, I felt that for every one step forward I make, circumstances would always pull me three steps backward. I feel like I'm running on a treadmill, trying to chase something but going nowhere. I realized that I am so tired relying on my own strength and I would just let God take over. I was so determined that I can do it that I failed to ask God if what I want to do in my life is what He wants me to do. So like I said in my previous video, I felt convicted when I read the story of Jonah. So I heard God's calling but I chose to ignore it and do my own thing because I got really scared. So in May this year, I decided to go back to YouTube and just share my faith journey. If you look at my YouTube channel, you could see that I started last year. 
I actually have the desire to share about my faith uh, and my faith journey for a long time, but I was so hesitant about it and I had so many excuses just like Moses. But it's funny because for every excuse I have, it seems that God has answers immediately. Like excuses I have or questions I have like, who am I? What do I know? Am I a pastor? Did I go to seminary school? I'm just, a lear I'm just learning about the Bible myself, so I don't feel qualified. And God gave me one word, teacher. So I am a teacher by profession, and as a teacher, we are always reminded that we are facilitators of learning. So we are there not to show the learning to the students, but let them discover the learning by helping them through the process. So for example, when we tell stories, we don't just tell them directly, okay, kids, we are going to have a story today and here's the lesson of the story. No, we don't do that. We let them find that out on their own. And in order to do that, we have to unlock difficulties first. So we have to define the difficult words that will appear in the story in such a way that they would understand it. And while you are telling the story, we basically throw questions to help them think. So at the end of the learning session, they themselves can form conclusions because they became active participants in the learning process. They can form judgments on their own on what the story is all about and how it could relate in their life. And that was like a light bulb moment, moment for me. It felt so freeing that God is not expecting too much from me. He's basically saying that, revelation is his responsibility and my only responsibility is to share the process and things that help me get closer to him shoving the truth to other people and telling them jesus loves you is different from letting them be an active participant of the process because when you have the desire to know god i believe it feels like you are on a journey because he keeps revealing new things to you in anything, I feel like when you are involved in the process, it has more meaning to you. You value it because you are part of the journey. And when you really desire to seek God, He will reveal Himself to you. He will lead you to the right resources. You just really have to open your heart and pray about it. Of course, we get a lot of wisdom from the Bible. But actually, the joy itself comes from continuously knowing Jesus day by day. It's like a gift that you continuously unwrap each day. It's like a treasure, having a treasure each day. I wish I listened and followed God earlier. Maybe I would have spared with what I've experienced. But God doesn't waste any of our experiences and pains. Like Esther, maybe the reason why I experienced all those humbling experiences like anxiety, depression, isolation, partly because of my own doing, but also because God, because of the lesson God wants me to learn. Uh, and I realized that throughout my journey, having a real relationship with Jesus is possible no matter who you are. And that I cannot always rely on my strength, own strength and planning. I always have to ask God. Many times we think that our calling should be grand like changing the world or making a big impact. Because of that, we underestimate ourselves and our abilities and we often convince ourselves that we are not worthy of our calling. We could hear this voice, we could hear this message from God, but we keep on ignoring it. I don't know about you, but maybe God whispered something in your heart. Like every now and then it convicts you that maybe you should do it. But like me, maybe you feel overwhelmed because you don't feel worthy to do it. Most likely, you already have the abilities to do it. Some, sometimes, I believe it's our personal ego that gets in the way. Like, who would listen to me? Who would believe me? I am no one. <laughs> and also, realities of life set in like financial needs. So we set aside our calling even when we could clearly hear and feel it because we feel that we are becoming irresponsible if we pursue it instead of doing the more sensible things for our family. And I absolutely understand that. But to be honest with you, in my life, even though I tried all those personal ventures, 
I actually was not able to contribute to our finances that much. All along, we hit lots of milestones in our lives like traveling, purchasing a house, helping others, and being faithful on our tithes on one income only. I say that not to brag, but just to share how faithful God is over all these years. So now I am at the point in my life where I feel like I am at the point of no return. I am so tired trying to do it on my own and now I am just ready to follow God's leading. Like I said, I wish I listened to him earlier because I am now at the point of my life where there are so many uncertainties, but I have never ever felt so secure as ever. It took a while for me to realize and accept that I have to unfollow my dreams in order to embrace the dreams God has for me. And actually, it is also my prayer that you ask God what it is He wants you to do and have the courage to just try it. For sure, it will be a rocky journey, but always remember, He promised never to leave you or forsake you. Oh my gosh. I think that's it for now, guys. That's actually very difficult to look back on all those memories. But I do wish that this will inspire somehow in order to, you know, search or like try. Try the calling God has set in your heart. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate that you stayed here up to this last minute. And if this video inspires you, please don't forget to like it and I will appreciate it if you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Kay Ramos and see you guys again next time. Bye!